To step down AC voltages we use a transformer. But, how we can step down DC voltages? To increase or decrease the DC voltages DC-DC converters are used. The converter that can increase the DC voltages is called boost converter. And the converter that can decrease the DC voltages is called buck converter. For example, in a mobile phone, there is a battery that provides a DC voltage of around 3.8 volts. That is used to run the CPU core which needs typically around 1 volt. The camera needs around 2.85 volts. The audio codec needs about 1.8 volts. 4G LTE antenna modem needs around 2.8 volts. And so on. But the question is how the mobile phone managed to lower the voltage from 3.8 volts to this versatile range of DC voltages. This is possible because of buck converter. In this video lecture, you will learn theory and working of a buck converter and in the second half, we will take a design example also simulated in MATLAB Simulink to enhance our understanding. First of all, consider the definition of buck converter. It is a step-down DC to DC converter. This is the circuit diagram of the buck converter. That consists of one inductor and one capacitor. The circuit also consists of a switch. This switch is switched on and off in every cycle. The number of cycles per unit second is termed as the frequency. Usually, this frequency is kept higher than the audible range of human beings. The second important parameter is the duty ratio. The duty ratio is the time period in which the switch is kept on. The output voltage depends upon the duty ratio. Higher the duty ratio, the larger will be the output voltage. For example, if we consider the speed control of DC motor. Then, the speed of this DC fan is dependent upon the duty ratio. When the duty ratio is 20% then the speed is also 20 revolutions per minute. When the duty ratio is increased to 40% then the speed is also increased to 40 revolutions per minute. Similarly, when the duty ratio is increased to 60% then the speed is also increased to 60 revolutions per minute. And so on. Let's discuss the working of the buck converter. We can split the working into two cases. One, when the switch is closed. And, second, when the switch is open. Observe that, when the switch is closed. Then, the source voltage is directly connected to this node due to which this diode will become reverse biased and become open. And when the switch is open, then, then this diode becomes forward biased, and, becomes closed. Let's discuss case 1. On the right side, the first waveform represents the voltage across the inductor. The second waveform represents the capacitor current. The third waveform represents the inductor current. By looking at the capacitor waveform, the case 1, when the switch is closed is further divided into two parts. Number 1, when the capacitor current is negative. And number 2, when the capacitor current is positive. Consider the first part when the capacitor current is negative which means capacitor is discharging giving current to load because inductor current is small and not enough to fulfill the load current requirement. But, as the inductor current is increasing continuously, the time comes when the inductor current is sufficient to provide it to load, plus, charge the capacitor. Which is part 2 when the capacitor current is positive. Now, discuss the case 2 when the switch is open, the source voltage is disconnected. And, we are not taking current from the source, we are actually saving the source power at this moment thus increasing the converter efficiency. This case can also be divided into two parts. Number 1, when the capacitor is charging means the capacitor current is positive. And, number 2, when the capacitor is discharging means the capacitor current is negative. In first case, when the capacitor is charging, the current is coming from the inductor. As the inductor current is decreasing, the time came when it enters to second part where capacitor current become negative which means capacitor starts discharging. In this case, both inductor and capacitor currents will combine to meet the load current requirement. Remember, the load current remains constant. This is the advantage of this converter because of which it is called buck regulator. Now, let's take a design example. For example, the required output voltage is 18 volts. 
while the supply voltages are 48 volts. And, if we suppose the load is a 10 ohm resistor. Then, the load current can easily be determined using Ohm's law. And, it will be 1.8 amperes. As already discussed, the duty ratio is the ratio of output voltage to supply voltages. Thus, it will be 0.37. Consider the other design consideration. For example, we want that the output voltage ripple is about 1 volt. If we want to further reduce this ripple then, we have to use a higher value of the capacitor. Second, we consider that the inductor ripple current is 25 of load current. Which comes out to be 0.45 amperes. And switching frequency is kept at 50 kHz which is higher than the audible frequency range. Next, find the inductor's design value which comes out 333 micro henry. Lastly, find the capacitor design value which is 1.7 microfarad. Now verify the results using MATLAB Simulink. Open the MATLAB. Next, select the folder that contains the Simulink file. Open the file. This is a buck converter circuit. The supply voltage is 48 volts. For duty ratio, use the continuous pulse generator. Set the time period which is reciprocal to the frequency. As the frequency is 50 kilos. This is the power GUI. It is set to discrete you can also set it to continuous from these options. Set the inductor value to 333 micro henry. Set the capacitor value to 1.7 microfarad. This block is an ammeter. And, this block is a voltmeter. Load resistance is 10 ohms. Now press the run button. After the simulations are completed double click the scope to see the results. The results can be divided into two parts. Number 1, this is the transient response. Number 2, this is the steady state response. Recall that our required voltage is 18 volts with the voltage ripple around 1 volt. And, the load current is around 1.8 amperes. Thus, the results are consistent with the theory. Now, we can check the effect of the duty ratio on the output voltage. For this purpose, go to Simulink Library and type SUM in the search tab. Drag this component into your project. Increase the number of inputs to 4. Duplicate the pulse generator. Drag to set their position. Add them all. Set the duty ratio of the first block to 20%. And for the second block set the duty ratio to 40%. And also adjust the phase delay accordingly. Similarly set the set duty ratio of the third block to 60% and the duty ratio of the fourth block is 80%. Now, run the simulations. Now, check the results. When the duty ratio is 20% then the output voltage is around 10 V. And when the duty ratio is increased to 40% then load voltage increases to 19 volts. And so on. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.